Greetings ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, likers, dislikers, commenters, new subscribers, old subscribers and just generally anybody who watches these videos, welcome back. Incoming! <laughs> so as you probably have noticed, my Q&A is running a tad late and uh, there's a good reason for that as I just haven't got around to doing it. I am sorting other things out. Other things have taken priority. And uh, yeah, but I know one thing. I missed out one question for one person in particular. Moto Tingle asked me the story of how and why XT. And it's an easy one. So for anybody that didn't or doesn't know, I was probably the world's longest 125 rider at a staggering nine years. Yes, I went nine years on a learner's. I did one CBT, seen what was coming and decided that uh, I need to get the test done because I'm not, if, I, if any of these new things come in, I'm not passing. So knuckled down and decided that Basically, nine years was too much, and time to get it sorted. Now, at this point, before it decided, I had my eye on two bikes. Well, three bikes. Hell, I three bikes, and the three bikes were the Yamaha Phaser 600, not the. 2000 series with the the fox eyes it was the square eyes one I was after because I like the look of it and they were bomb proof also was looking at at the time ironically when I think back to it is wow <laughs> the MTO 3 which has the XT660 engine in it and a 600 bandit now a little information behind that is i don't really like bikes that everybody has because well everybody's done everything and anything to them and when you do something someone will bound to turn around i know someone that did that and did this don't like that don't do not like that one little bit so i started doing the test finally passed and funny sad story about that is when I passed and the instructor or examiner sat me down to tell me that I had passed he went basically congratulations you have passed and me being the huge big man that I am started crying to the surprise of the examiner and he goes you have passed and I went I know and he goes why are you crying and I was like well the struggle that it was for me in tests we didn't never ever see see eye to eye let's say and uh, basically he had just ended the the nine year going on ten year struggle and uh, at that point it was right I need a bike <laughs> and it was the year of the jubilee so it was, and anybody doesn't know what that's like. It's, yep, it was the year of the Jubilee, and uh, of course everything was closed for three days. Well, not three days, but two at least. And basically got on the gum tree and looked for a 600 that, well, a 600 that nobody has, or not really has, or not very many of them, or you know, just something unique looking and I came across the sex T as Daily Derps likes to call it where was it? yes got the XT and I was looking for something that was in the price range that wasn't too plasticky I don't like I like sports bikes I don't like the way they have so much plastic on them naked bikes too little plastic so I was looking for something that just had a look came across the XT sort of 
had a wee look around on the, the aftermarket parts side of things and thought, yeah, that's, that's, that's maybe the one that I want. Contacted the seller, told him, listen, in the market, interested, tell me, give me all the stuff I need to check. So he gave me all the stuff, checked it, turns out it was all clear, it was good to go. Um, at that time, I was working nine to five, so it was really hard to get to the place inside the hours that the guy was looking. Got in contact with him, agreed a time, lifted 250 pound out of the bank, lifted myself 250 quid out of the bank, jumped, my cousin decided he'd take me down on the back of his 1200 bandit, and uh, get down there. Cousin at the time says, well, I'll have a look at it. He sat on the bike, took a nip up and down the street, and went, "Yep, that's the that's that's that, that's working grand. Everything's sound and good." Give the guy the two hundred and fifty pound, and said, "Do not sell it. Take the advert down." He did take the advert down, and basically, because the banks were shut, I couldn't get money. I couldn't get the. I think it was like two grand. That, it was at, at the time, I couldn't get that money together, so what I had to do was find a bank that was open, transfer the money into my mother's account, and uh, she had to go into the bank, lift, her, lift the money, and uh, give it to me, and then I had to go down there and pick it up. But behind all this, I had to have my insurance ready, everything ready, which was easy enough. Basically got that done. Went down, picked the bike up, cousin again, take me down the back of his bandit. Which, if I ever do change a bike and I have a limited amount of money and I see one, a 1200 bandit S will be the one that I go for. The old school one, not the fuel injected one. I'm not too sure on those. Um, but uh, it was funny because I think my cousin still thought it was on a 125 or it was going to act like it. Got on the bike, geared up, shook hands, passed the money over. Guy didn't count the money as a, a trust, fired me £20 back and decided to leave Bangor, well, Malile, and uh, left Malile through Bangor. Heading home, I actually, <laughs> riding the bike home, it was actually unrestricted. There was, uh, if, if you've ever come here uh, from Malile to Belfast, it's all mainly dual carriageways and stuff, so. There wasn't an issue with stopping, but uh, <laughs> basically from the word go, I wanted. I was in happy mode. I got my bike. I belted off up the road. Now my cousin is driving along, admiring the scenery, like la 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 la, looking around him. The bike at the time was virtually silent because it had the standard pipes on it. So it was like uh, three, two, one, go disappeared cousin actually had to speed up to catch me got to a petrol station lent my cousin a fiver to get petrol and if you ride a bandit you understand a fiver would have got you nowhere lent him the money to get petrol and basically said to him that I need to get this bike restricted and he asked me why and I said because I'm gonna get a speeding ticket because it was so, I wouldn't say unused, but it was it was a summer weekender bike, the odd time to work. It was lethal, that thing flew. And obviously because of that standard pipes and all on it. And uh, as for that, uh, that's basically how it all happened. Never looked back since. I'm doing all these test rides on bikes and uh, I'm not interested. A few of them have taken me eye, but I'm not, for what I need, it is perfect. So yeah, that's how I got my XT. Thank you for Moto Tingle for asking the question, and sorry I forgot. Another thing is, uh, go check out Moto Tingle, because 
I'm probably not even saying his name right, that's the worst part about it. He does some interesting topics. He has my exact attitude to life. Great guy too. And basically in the comments below, I want you to tell me what your ideal bike is. Not your, not your dream bike as I've already asked. Your ideal bike for your situation. Um, if you already have a bike, I know some people who watch don't have a bike, so that's for them. For the people that do watch, tell me why you picked your bike. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Hopefully I will wheedle out two, maybe three more vlogs on the Grom, and then that should be me back. I just have to get the MOT organised. As always, keep it lit. And if you can't keep it lit, well, maybe you shouldn't really be on a bike. As everybody goes, but you didn't put oil in yours, so why are you still on a bike? It's because I learn from my mistakes. Ish. Incoming!